And welcome back, everybody. Uh, we got a little bit of time left, so we want to go around the table here, and I'm going to give these guys here, who I just insulted before the break, an opportunity, hopefully not to insult me, but to give a soapbox <laughs> here for a minute apiece. And Dominic, start with you. What uh, grabbed your attention this week? Well, mine is about a program, a remarkable program. And understand, it, the program is called Hudson Link. And this is not from the perspective of a bleeding heart liberal, but this is a remarkable program that is educating prison inmates, getting them college degrees. I saw the documentary, I just had to set this up, and a seasoned journalist, what did I do watching the documentary? Boo hoo hoo. So here's my point. After seeing the documentary, it's titled Zero Percent, I'm telling you society cannot afford to pass on programs like Hudson Link. Hudson Link is a college education program that's run inside the Sing Sing Correctional Facility. One professor in the film said that education is not just a gift for them, referring to the inmates, that it's a gift for society. This sounds like a public relations line, that is, until you actually see this documentary. Why is it titled Zero Percent? Remarkably, Richard and Andrew, not one, not one of the released graduates of the program has returned to jail. Contrast that with a national 60% chance of returning to jail within just three years. Now, as Hudson Link says on its website, it costs an average of $51,000 per year to keep one person incarcerated, locked up. And for every year that Hudson Link, 64 released graduates stay out of prison, New York State saves that is, saves $3.3 million. You do the math. And I also forgot to mention that Hudson Link was founded when uh, state and federal funding for college education in prison stopped. Now, this happened in the late 1990s. The group raises the money themselves. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking, and that is why should prison inmates have constructive and meaningful lives? Well, besides the fact of isn't that ultimately the goal for everyone, these men and women will return to their communities, and it's all about each one teach one. I know I've gone over my time, but let me just say this. One of Hudson Link's graduates is employed helping the school district of Newburgh, New York, connect with troubled high school students at the Newburgh Free Academy. Another one is running a boxing program in the community, saving lives each and every day. And I got to tell you, Dominic, I've been to graduations uh, for these and I've covered them the best commencement addresses I've ever heard. All right, Andrew, what do you got? Well, it's been some time since the Rupert Murdoch News Corp phone hacking scandal made headlines in the U.S., but it got some new legs thanks to PBS's stellar news show Frontline last night. The takeaway goes far beyond just hacking cell phones. It speaks to government and even police influence. Rupert Murdoch and News Corp own so many newspapers and TV networks in the U.K. that a former Murdoch editor, Sir Harry Evans, said, the government was so afraid of Rupert Murdoch he could do anything. Why should I care, you might ask? That's Britain, this is the U.S. Well, this is the U.S. where News Corp owns 27 TV stations, Fox and Fox News, The Wall Street Journal and The New York Post, DirecTV, HarperCollins Publishing, and much more. Or take Comcast, which owns NBC, Universal, Hulu, three cable networks, and more. And the list goes on and on. Disney, CBS, Time Warner. Don't forget Clear Channel, they have a monopoly of 850 radio stations. All these companies got to be so big only because the government changed the laws to allow them to become so overgrown. Their relationship to and with lawmakers and the hundreds of millions of dollars they spent on influencing elections and policy should concern all of us. Are we really getting impartial and penetrating coverage of our lawmakers? Just how much influence do they have in our politics and our government? And who's left to tell this story when all the storytellers work for the companies involved? Right now we're left to just cross our fingers and hope that they're helping, just like News Corp did in the UK. Rich. Dun, 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 dun. Serious. Uh, you got me thinking I'm here, Andrew. I'm a little nervous. All right. <laughs>